Good morning and happy Sabbath, PIC. Happy Sabbath. Uh, right now, uh, I have uh, one illustration. Uh, there is a man who asked the pastor, Pastor, I have a big, big problem. And the pastor told him, uh, asked him, What is your problem? And a man told the pastor, I want to have a perfect, perfect uh, growing in my hair because I'm a bald. I'm, I'm, uh, my hair is bald. And I really want to have a perfect uh, hair. And the pastor told him, you know what? I have a solution or I have the answer to your problem. And the, the man told the pastor, Pastor, what is that? I am very excited. And the pastor told him that the answer is letter A. And the man told the pastor, what is that pastor? And the pastor told him, A stands for acceptance. Brothers and sisters, my dearly beloved brothers and sisters, right now, it's whether you, you accept or not, we pray for the Holy Spirit, for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit to guide us for our message this morning. And our topic this morning is about perfection, the outgrowth of a relationship. But before that, shall we bow down our heads to hear the word of prayer? Our gracious Heavenly Father, we ask the Holy Presence to be with us. Speak through me. And may you give us wisdom and understanding. And also the audience, please give them the understanding about the perfection and the outgrowth of our relationship. In Jesus' name that we pray, amen. I have only three questions that I'm going to ask you. Number one, what are the motives for triumphant living? What are the motives for the triumphant living? And number two, what are we talking about when we speak of perfection? What are we talking about when we speak of perfection? And number three, why we should strive to attain perfection? Is perfection is attainable or not? That would be the three questions that we have this morning. And whether you will accept or not, we need to pray for it. The glorious experience of righteousness by faith, sanctification, perfection does not spring from the motives of a fear of being lost, a selfish desire to be saved, and a cold and moralistic sense of duty. Perfection, a fully mature Christian character, grows out of a relationship, a relationship with God. In Hebrews, our main uh, text, please open your Bible. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. In the, uh, New King James Version and in new or new international version make every effort to live in peace with all men and to be holy without holiness no one will see the lord no one will see the lord perfection in greek word is teleos we have another term is karkatizo which means maturity completeness, stableness, and one thing is holiness. That is perfection in Greek word, which is teleios or karkatizo. 
maturity in our character. Maturity or stableness in our character completely in whole, uh, having our holiness in our character. The Christian is now to accept Christ's power to keep him from sin. Christ's power, not our power, not our might, but by the Holy Spirit. Perfect Christ completely re recovers us from sin. He keeps us from sinning. There is absolutely no excuse for sinning. There is absolutely no excuse for sinning. God's ideal for His children is higher than the highest human thought and can reach. Godliness and Christ-likeness is a goal is a goal to be rich and in matthew chapter 5 verse 48 be ye therefore perfect even your father which is in heaven is perfect and god wants us to be perfect free from sin he wants us to be free from sin free from sinning for sin shall not have dominion over you for ye are not under the law but under grace in Romans chapter 6 verse 14 the experience and subject of perfection embrace justification sanctification and righteousness by faith The experience uh, and subject of perfection embrace justification, sanctification, and righteousness by faith. The following seven terms, number one, holiness, justification, righteousness, righteousness by faith, sanctification, Christ-likeness, and perfection. And the number one is, what is holiness? What is holiness? Perfection, holiness, nothing short of this would give them success in carrying out the principles He had given them. Holiness, it is the work of the gospel to restore that which has been lost. It is the work of the gospel to restore that which it has been lost. And holiness is agreement with God. God has commanded us, be ye holy, for I am holy. And an inspired apostle declares that without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Holiness is likeness to God. Righteousness is holiness, likeness to God, and God is love. Holiness is wholeness for God. When we say wholeness, it is a whole being, a character, the character of God. Glory, in Greek word is idoxa. Glory, the character of God. Holiness is purity of life. Holiness of heart and purity of life was the great subject of the teaching of Christ. The holiness is purity. And now letter E. The holiness is lifting the cross. The holiness is lifting the cross. Holiness does not consist in profession, but in lifting the cross, doing the will of God. Wow. That is holiness. Holiness is not a rapture. It is an entire surrender of the will to God. Entire surrender to the will of the will to God. You know what? When I was in Iloilo, my province is from Iloilo, my only perception in life is to be a popular architect or to be a good architect someday and to have a big house, seven or five uh, cars and a and, uh, rich husband. 
But when God, <laughs> when God urged the Holy Spirit to empower me, all is vanity, all is meaningless. All is meaningless. When I was here in Manila, that would be my perception in life. But God uses a lot of people. God uses many people to, em to empower or to inspire, to inspire people. Then I went to, I went to Aurora province and I trained as a lay woman for almost uh, for two and a half years and my, my father told me you know what you're a slave by the pastors why why go back to Iloilo and uh, find your job and find your job abroad and he gave me 50,000 pesos or more than 50,000 just to apply to abroad or apply so I respect him as my father, I respect him. So I, pl I applied international and local uh, job or work, but it is, it, it is not the providence of God to work abroad. And when I came here in AUP, I have only 200 pesos. I have only 200 pesos. They don't want to, to give uh, money or uh, support for me for my tuition and I work I, I applied uh, to the Cadena de Amor with uh, Mom Capiendo and I am thankful because he I <laughs> he gave me 2,000 pesos just to uh, to have our my down payment and you know what brothers and sisters I am thankful to God because God leads his people on step by step. He don't want me to dwell on the dark side of my life and he want me to go to the to the light to the truth that we have right now. It is an entire surrender of, of the will to God and I I have God I have a lot of difficulties in my life. When I was there in Singalong church I uh, I have a an uh, illness which is which uh, uh, gastric inflammation but it is actually going to colon cancer and I pray to God God if you want me to to live please help me and I will serve you fully brothers and sisters right now I dedicated, I dedicated my life to God. It is living by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And that is holiness. It is doing the will of our Heavenly Father. It is trusting God in trial, in darkness, as well as in light. It is walking by faith, not by sight. It is walking by faith, not by sight. And last one is resting in his love resting in his love number two what is justification justification we are saved from the penalty of sin because jesus died for you jesus died for us jesus died for me that is justification in ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 Justification is pardon, forgive, forgiveness. Justified means pardon. You don't do anything. Justification lays the glory of man in the dust. It is the work of God in laying the glory of man in the dust and doing for man that which it is not in his power, it is not on his power to do for himself. But it is the power of God to change us. Change us. And one thing is, what is righteousness? Righteousness is love. Righteousness is embodied in Christ. 
Righteousness is conformity to the law of God. The heart is united with His heart. The will is merged with His will. The mind becomes one with His mind. That is the righteousness in oneness of Christ. The thoughts are brought into captivity to Him. We live His life. That is what it means to be clothedly the garments or clothed with the garments of His righteousness. In Christ's Object Lesson 312, that is what it means to be clothed, clothed by the garments of His righteousness. Righteousness is what? Right doing. Right doing. And the righteousness is holiness, likeness to God. And one thing, righteousness is perfect obedience. If we follow Him, if we obey Him, then we do the right thing. Thing. Exact obedience is required and those that say that it is not possible to live a perfect life throw upon God the imputation of injustice and untruth. When I, I, we will go back to perfect. Perfect means maturity. We are step by step. We reach the maturity level of our character. Every step of our life, we reach the perfect maturity of our life. My father, but I have uh, my conversation with my father last uh, year. He told me, Nak, or dot, my daughter, I am not worthy. I am not worthy. And for the three times, I am not worthy to be your father. And I told him, No, father. No, tatay. You are worthy. You are spiritually growing. You are perfectly growing in Christ. Not in ourselves, but in Christ's righteousness. You are perfectly growing. And he cried because my father is a Catholic, but he is a, a prayerful man. Righteousness is is oneness with Christ. That is what it means to be clothed with the garments of His righteousness. Christ Object Lesson 312. What is righteousness by faith? It is therefore our faith in the obedience and sinlessness and the righteousness of Christ that is accepted in the judgment. Faith is accepting Christ as a personal Savior. Faith is is accepting Christ as our personal Savior. Faith enables us to accept and appropriate Christ to ourselves, to receive Him and His love, forgiveness, righteousness, and power. And right now we are in sanctification. What is sanctification? Sanctification, we are being saved. In 1 Corinthians chapter... Please open your Bible in 1 Corinthians Chapter 1, verse 18. 1, verse 18. And for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are per perishing but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. We are being saved from the power of sin. We are being saved. We are in a progressive work. We are in a progressive work. It 
It is to give oneself wholly and without reserve to God to know and to do the will of God without regard to self or self-interest, to be heavenly minded, pure, unselfish, holy, and without spot or stain. Reserve. Ladies, when I, uh, I really want to, to say about reserve, especially to the ladies. We need to be reserved. Sanctification is a Bible doctrine. Sanctification has to do with the entire being. Sanctification is an entire surrender of the will to God. Sanctification is a daily dying to self. Wow. Napakahirap. But through the Holy Spirit, it is possible to do. Dying to self. It is possible to do. It is possible to do. Sanctification is a daily dying to self. Genuine sanctification is nothing less than a daily dying to self. We need to die daily. That is sanctification. It's not my righteousness. It's Christ's righteousness. It's not our uh, work. It's not my works. It's not your work, but it is Christ's works. In doing evangelism, in doing voice of youth, or some ministries, it is not our work, but it's, it is the work of the Holy Spirit or the work of Christ. But we are an ordinary people who used by the Holy Spirit and used by our, by our God. Perfection. We ha I have eight points. Perfection, the outgrowth of a relationship with God which is created when one is converted. Converted. Wow. I was baptized when I was 10 years old. But actually, I am truly converted. 2006. 2000, to, uh, 1996, I was baptized 1996, but actually I am truly converted 2006. When uh, from gener the General Conference uh, went to our province, then they uh, conducted a revival and reformation. That would be the, my uh, turning point. The sincere heart cry of the truly converted Christian will be, I will be pure as Jesus in me is pure. I will be honest as Jesus in me is honest. And I will be loving as Jesus in me is loving.